Dr. Lillian obtained her first degree in petroleum engineering from Federal University of Technology, Wewe. She then proceeded to the United Kingdom, where she earned a master's degree in reliability engineering and asset management from the University of Manchester in 2015. She completed her PhD in 2022 from the Department of Mechanical, Aerospace and Civil Engineering at the University of Manchester in 2022. Since 2021, Dr. Lillian has worked as an asset management consultant with Binis UK, a part of the global IOSK group and engineering management consultancy company within the UK water, within the UK water sector, where she, she is focused on delivering asset management plans using digital solutions. She is pas passionate about creating gender balance in STEM and creating awareness, awareness of asset management among BAM group. Please let everybody join me to welcome Dr. Lina as she take over now. You're welcome. Ma. Thank you. Hello. Good evening. Good evening. So, uh, yeah. So, um, Engineer Adele, who is um, the membership secretary at our Manchester um, NSC branch, um, asked me to come in to present. So, and I think your secretary reached out to me. Um, so today I'll just be giving you um, the presentation from my own experience from my registration process with the NSC, which is quite, is now seamless because you can do it online, unlike before where you needed to go to um, the centers to do the exams and also the interview. So I'm just going to present a uh, window now. Yeah. Okay, so um, like um, I was um, like as I was introduced, my name is um, Lilian Yukumera Esotu. I'm an asset management consultant at um, Binis. Um, basically, what I do as an asset management consultant is provide engineering, reliability, and maintenance solutions for physical assets and um, infrastructure, um, pumps, compressors and pipeline strategy and basically um, things that um, are used to deliver water and uh, maintain water around um, the UK. So, okay, um, a, a bit of this is going to have things like Manchester, which is my local branch. I think um, for everyone that aspires to be part of the a corporate member of the Nigerian Society of Engineers, you have to register with your local branch be it in Lagos, be it in Ibadan, be it outside the UK, accredited branches, also, I mean, outside the country in the UK or in America. So my local branch is Manchester UK branch. To be a member first of the branch, not with the general NSC, we usually pay, you pay an annual due of 30 pounds and then you need to maintain membership for at least a year. Same thing if you're applying from any branch in Nigeria. The reason why you need to maintain that membership for a year is because when you start the NSC process, you need to have a proposal that is um, a corporate member with good financial standing. And they are basically saying they know you and they can attest that you've been doing what you're doing. So um, before someone can do that sort of attestation, they need to know who you are. Within that branch, wherever you are, we usually have WhatsApp groups for different branches. Whenever a diet of the NSC, because it's usually in diets, the next diet is going to come in in April. I think the previous one was in either January or February, I can't remember. So it's usually in diets, like quarters. The branch announces that and um, the branch will tell you that another um, diet has come and they give all the information and people who are interested at that point go to the NSC portal to register the process it would describe the process um, of registration and then um, um, selecting the categories you are in I'm still going to explain these categories a bit, but the full details of what A1, A2, B1, B2 is, is quite defined in the website. So after that, you register, you select the category 
Am I still being heard? Just to be sure. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So Can after, you? okay. After you select that from the website, the website is quite um is easy to navigate and the information, the relevant information you would receive, as well as the branch, your branch would like for we in Manchester would carry you along, you know, providing information. Anyone that has done the process will lead you through it, you know, like your mentor through that process. And so after you select the category you're in, we're still going to touch on that. You'll complete the relevant sections and then you'll contact your branch to provide a proposal for you. They would need to provide two proposals who are NSC corporate members. And so after the proposals, you would impute the name of the proposals once your branch gives that to you and NSC would contact the proposers directly through the portal. Once the pro um, proposers accept that they, are, they know you and they can attest, your application will proceed to the next stage. And then you would complete the acknowledgement form, which is part of the things that you can download from the um, website, NSC website, or you can get from your local branch. After completing the acknowledgement form, you will send it to the chairman of your local branch who would also sign it. And it forms part of the documents that you would upload on the NSC portal. After that, there is a statement of experience form. That statement of experience form is basically you describing your engineering experience post-graduation. And post-graduation for people, some people often mistake NYC, but NYC is actually post-graduation. So if the things you've done during NYC, it still counts as post-graduation. So your engineering experience, you describe it. Your engineering experience could be core technical engineering experience or design. For someone like me, my experience, um, engineering experience has been more advisory in the asset management group, because what I do basically is like, you know, developing things like failure mode, um, analysis, developing root cost analysis and things like that. So engineering is very broad. It could be design, it could be advisory, but as long as it still has its roots based on engineering principles, you would write about that and then you give probably the duration, how long it stayed, how the project, how much the project cost, what was your own particular um, contribution to the project. Um, and basically after that, there is a report, also a technical report. It's two reports in itself, describing two of your best um, projects, you know, things like um, challenges, um, things like, um, like, you know, basically, and so for different people that have different experiences, it's going to be different. Say, someone, a process engineer would have a different experience from someone that is a civil engineer, a petroleum engineer would have someone, something that is different. Someone, new, new, new type, new disciplines of engineering is beginning to emerge now, software engineering, data, mining and engineering. So basically, it's no longer the traditional engineering of chemical, civil, mechanical, and petroleum. Different, um, um, like emerging engineering fields are beginning to come out, you know, water engineering, um, you know, things like that. So basically, you just prepare your best to report, and then you submit your reports and wait for the communication for the NSC. But to be fair, I've jumped a few steps, which I've put in the next slide. Because when um, you submit the first uploads, that's before the report, um, it would ask you to pay for a mandatory continuing professional education workshop, which is a three-day workshop. And that's after they've looked at your initial acknowledgement and statement of experience to see if you qualify. It's only people who qualify and who submit and upload the documents within the time frame that will be contacted to proceed and pay for this mandatory continuing professional education workshop. This workshop is for three days. Um, it's going to run different. So some, for it, if you have the time, 
it's going to remind you of so many engineering things you did in your second year and your third year. So they will have different speakers coming in just to refresh you, tell you about your duties as an engineer, tell you about your the core principles of engineering, cost engineering, just to give you like a refresher of things you've done a long while ago. After you complete that, it would give you a certificate of completion, and then it would now request for you to submit those two um, technical reports. The format of that report, the way it should be exactly, is also on the website. So if, it's, if you struggle to write reports, like um, maybe you haven't written a report in a long while, it's good to follow that um, format because it would you could just be based on the questions it's asking and based on how it's been um, listed there you can just follow that format to provide the answers whether and then afterwards you could have appendices of pictures maybe if you've gone pictures on site pictures of engineering um, drawing pictures with clients pictures in the field pictures of equipment you're describing and things like that and then after you submit your technical report, they'll go through it. And after that, they would invite you for the oral defense of your technical report and statement of report. All of this process was done online. They will be sending you messages to your email that you've given to them to inform you of each stage of these. And you can also track whatever stage you're at on the NSC portal. So after the oral defense, they will take, I think, probably two or three days, and then they will come back to inform successful candidates for part two of the examination. And after that, they will inform you on when your day, for the, the process of this, is, this is quite um, very tedious, the part two, which is a CBT exam, or for use of English and also engineering principles. And just to warn you, <laughs> it's engineering principles from your year two, like, you know, things you've forgotten, but there are past questions, which are things we help out in the branch to provide past questions, just so you can be aware of the types of questions you would need and all of that. And I think it lasts for about 60 minutes. And after that, results will be sent out to successful candidates and your membership would be, um, if some people upgrade or if it's a new peer person, you become a corporate member. So um, I said I was going to describe like what the criteria are. This stuff I've put here is actually on the website. So it just says A1 are for people who have bachelor's degree in engineering and have been credited. Um, and these, these ones have been registered already as current. But the good thing now with the new format is once you have your NSC, unlike before where you have to go back to Corin to start to write the exams again and do interviews again, you don't need to do that again. Once you have your NSC now, you just need to fill some forms, which is similar to what you filled with your NSC form and you send across to Corin and you get your registration as an engineer once you pay the fee. So it's quite easy for us. Our predecessors had it really difficult, unlike now. Um, so we just list what A1 is, what A2 is, um, B1, B2. I think so most people usually fall under, you know, B1, B2. You have a degree in engineering from a current approved university in Nigeria or abroad, and you have a minimum of four-year post-qualification. B2 also, you've obtained it at a HM, you HND or PhD, um, PGD in the same field of engineering, and have acquired a minimum of six years post-graduation. And then there's C1, C2, and D4. So you would look at what um which of the groups you fall into and proceed accordingly for c1 and c2 c1 to d4 they have a slightly different path compared to a1 to b2 and um that's the end of my presentation if anyone has um questions i would be willing to answer at this point Thank you.
Thank you very much, man. Yeah. I really appreciate it.